So I'll ask you a simple question. How many of you, and you have to raise your hands, how many of you have toilets in your house? Oh my gosh, everybody. Modi ji is going to be very happy to, that, OK, Swachh Bharat is going in the right direction. And how many of you use it every day? <laughs> wow, this is absolutely amazing. Recently, we had gone to this picture-perfect uh, hill station called Chael in Himachal. And we have friends there, the monkeys, the langurs, and some human beings. So one such human being is the homeopath who practices there, who's our friend. And he said, OK, let me take you to a nature walk, which we did. Next day, he said, OK, we'll take you to a particular village called Takrana. I said, wow, let's go. At Takrana, which is about one hour of a meandering drive downhill in the valley, we met a very interesting gentleman called Thakur Sahib. And the village is actually called Takrana, which is uh, Thakurana. And that was the Thakur Sahab of the village. He shared a lot of stories with us. He shared a lot of food with us. And after some time, I said, excuse me, but uh, where's the washroom? They exchanged glances amongst them. And uh, he assigned a very sweet looking, looking child. And he said, you take uncle. And another girl, you take auntie. OK, we said. And they took us out. Out mane in the jungle, <laughs> in the forest. And there is a very hallowed tradition which the geographers amongst you and the nature photographers and the birders know. It's a secret which the techies and the engineering departments and the MCRC guys are yet to learn and I'm sharing it here, it's called BTB. You know what is BTB? Raise hands. None. Nobody knows BTB? OK, one. What is BTB? Loud. Behind the bush. <laughs> You've got to go, go and do your damn thing, do it behind the bush. That's BTB. Now, we are filmmakers. Me, my wife, Kavita, Indian Express seven years. I've done all kinds of news channels and stuff so many years before we started making our own films. So we thought that, OK, that's not an issue. But there was an issue. My mother. My mother was with us, and she said, what is this happening? Am I supposed to be going out there? And ultimately, she had to, but she came back and took on Thakur Sahib. She said, you've got such a beautiful house. Now, don't you have the money to build a toilet? How unhygienic if we go outside. How unsafe. And the Thakur Sahib said, uh, you city guys are very dirty people. You are unhygienic. How can you imagine shitting at the same place every day. <laughs> it stinks. Year after year, you s sit and shit at the same place, and usually it's next to your bedroom. We said, yeah. So, but then my mother, she was a school teacher before she retired, and she's a fierce fighter. She didn't give up. She said, no, but this is not the way. You have to understand, this is not safe, this is not hygienic at all. He said, OK, let me talk about hygiene now. So where does your shit go? You flush it, 25 liters of water goes down. At an average, about 1,000 liters every family, maybe more, every day. And we are a big city, very big city. Where is the shit going? To the Yamuna. What do you do after that? You clean the Yamuna to give us potable water. He says, does it make sense? We had no answer. Absolutely none. We were silent. Because all our 
upbringing, all our science, technology, education. And there is a simple wisdom of a village person who says, how can you keep polluting your lifeline, which gives you potable water with your shit? Then you clean it so that Faridabad can have water to drink. Then they put their shit, then they clean it because Vrindavan and then Mathura and then Agra, they need their water to drink. What kind of stupidity is this? He says, this is not science. This is not modernity. This is not technology. Every day, we do so many things which are counterintuitive. Shitting is one. I mean, at the wrong place. There are other things. What happens to the garbage that we keep piling? All these nachos which come in very neat packages, the lays and the, you know, all kinds of things. And that packaging is not biodegradable. 500 years and that will still say lays. What happens to the landfills where we are filling up everything? They landscape them, put a green grass stop and put some sprinklers and say that, okay, children can come and play there. And when that mountain of garbage comes toppling down, like at, it did at Ghazipur recently, last month, Delhi, the capital city of India, then we understand that, okay, this is not the way to go. This is not the way we want to end up. Your children do not need to play on a pile of garbage what kind of a life is this? What kind of a quality of life are we giving our children if they have to play on a garbage heap? This people who live around that garbage heap are all dying of various ailments. I, I can't even name them, it's, it's horrible. The leachates going from that garbage are polluting your groundwater aquifers. It has chemicals, it has biomedical waste, the garbage heap has sanitary napkins. It has a lot of plastics. It has a lot of heavy metal kind of a thing because all kinds of industrial waste also gets mixed in. Now, how can we segregate this from a garbage heap? We can't. Once it has ended up there, it is going to be there. And that is going to pollute your groundwater aquifers wherever you live. Ghazipur might be very far from Jamia. But when the water, underground water aquifers get polluted, then Jamia is not far. That is the issue. We are all linked, this entire biosphere, we are all linked. When the honeybees die somewhere else, we are going to die. When we talk of technology, when we say that, okay, we are going on a path of progress and development, then what is the paradigm of development? Where are we going? Do we even stop to question where we are going? Running, 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 all the time, running, running, running. Do we know where we have to go? Why are we running? First find out that, okay, this is the direction I need to take, and this is the direction goes to the garbage heap. This goes to the 22 nalas, the drains, that are polluting the river Yamuna, that is the potable water for Delhi. I don't want to go there. I want to keep my water clean. I want to keep my soil and my earth green because that is what is going to keep me alive. The notion that science is value neutral is a notion. Scientists can be manipulated. Science can be used by any corporation or a politician, or a nexus to ruin your happiness. So we've got to really take off this set of glasses that we have. These glasses are antiquated. These glasses are useless now. And in the name of science, people are selling us all kinds of ideas. People are selling us all kinds of things from atom bombs to genetically modified food 
which I don't want. Because once my river is polluted, like Singapore, it imports water from Malaysia. And apart from that, it cleans its own urine, which goes into the river, whatever little river they have, and they purify it to drink. Now we are into the 21st century and India says we are going to be the superpower of the 21st century. We have Israeli technology here. But do you want to drink your own clarified urine? I don't. I'd much rather that my flush does not send all kinds of excreta into my river. I'm not game to cleaning that stuff and using it. Let's watch something which changes this paradigm and takes you to a people who do not follow this, this science. They have their science which we have rubbished as nonsense. We have rubbished that, okay, you are outdated. What kind of a thing is this? You guys are aboriginal people living in the forest. What do you know? We know everything. Gato la hai ila pinto. Ah, ala itti karo maratane. Uta moto e tenini lota. Anata tidi ya injani. Idi gato li il tipolo o mambi tinjina. Akuta sitaki anasahi i eda pararaha pava. Na ka kuruti ko ya se kore, na ni kuruti ko se kore, da ba modo ka kore. Oru egi ma inde ya se kore, kupla egi ma inde se kore, da ba modo ka kore. Na gari kore la ya se kore, na tuli kore lo o se koro, da ba modo ka koro. E pinga tinja nanga kilo se kore, moka onda nanga kilo se kore, daba modo ka koro. E anna ka koro ti de ya se kore, anna ni koro ti de se kore, daba modo ka koro. E na tuti mila misa se kore, na vanti mila misa se kore, daba modo ka koro. Usuru inji mane de ya se kore, papo inji mane de se kore, daba modo ka koro. Maya gari ne e de lo se kore, ma bale ki ne e de lo se kore, daba modo ka koro. Na gari kore la ya se kore, na tuli gore lo o se kore, daba modo ka koro. So that is another paradigm. Sustainable use of whatever resources you have and not coming with the hubris, not coming with this false sense of pride that the entire Kayanath, the entire nature, the entire world, the entire universe, cosmos is made for this person called the human being. No, we are just part of this creation. We are just one minuscule part and we don't own it all. We've got to exist with a lot of other species. We've got to let the honeybees live. The physicist Stephen Hawking has said something very disturbing, and he's usually right. He says the human beings have only about 100 years left to populate another planet. You can take a pick. How many of you like Mars? Nobody likes Mars. How many of you like the blue planet, the Earth? 
So, you have a choice now whether to keep it the way our forefathers had so that your children and grandchildren can enjoy the nature or you can go and book a ticket on somebody's spaceship to Mars and God help you. That is the question you have to ask yourself. You have to have the courage to say no. You have to have the sagacity to question and tell these people that no, you can't even get your rivers in order and you keep polluting them with all kinds of filth, with heavy metals and shit. I don't trust you with any genetic modification of food. I don't want to be a lab rat. So this power is in your hands to say no, that no, you are not lab rats. Shukriya.